Hey guys, today we have on Terry Allen Atwood. She is a marriage and relationship specialist. She sees clients for premarital, anxiety, depression, grief, women's issues, step families, and spiritual concerns. She's a published writer, speaker, and teacher. She also has a women's event team, Bold, Brave, Beautiful, where she and two other women do women's ministry events and retreats to help women by using testimonies, laughter, praise, and worship. I also have to throw in my two cents here. I follow this page and it is very uplifting. Mm -hmm. I love their singing and I love their messages that they post. So yeah, that's one of I, our favorites. Yes, I highly recommend following Bold, Brave, and Beautiful. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much, Terry, for hopping on and being willing to answer some of our questions on anxiety today. Yeah, one of our listeners had written in and that was a concern that they wanted us to talk about. So we really appreciate you hopping on with us today. So Kaylee, you want to hit the first? Glad to be with you. Thank you. Uh, so we'd like just to kind of get started with asking the simple question of just like, what's the difference in knowing if you're experiencing just a little nervousness or having like true anxiety? Like my pits are kind of sweating right now. So am, am, am I a little nervous or a little anxiety? <laughs> well, there's differences in fear and anxiety and fear is like a real perceived imminent threat, something immediate, but anxiety is an anticipation of a future threat. Like you're getting ready to do some speaking or you're getting ready to do a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, just, am I going to do it right? Am I going to mess up? And am I going to be embarrassed? That's what anxiety is about. Okay. So it's a lot of internal thinking because a lot of what yes. we're doing inside mm -hmm. of people aren't even thinking about. Mm -hmm. people, you know people, yes you know, see people speak they hope that the speaker does well they're not waiting for them to mess up so right <laughs> all right so okay. go ahead so um, so the next one would be is it normal to have anxiety like is it you know you hear people say like oh, i have anxiety and this is my level and you know it feels like there might be different levels so is it normal to have some anxiety it is and i think everybody has some anxiety and, um, you know, like fears are learned behaviors. Like uh, when I was in grad school, like 20 years ago, they showed a picture of um, a baby sitting there and they put a little bunny rabbit in its lap and, you know, pet the rabbit and everything was fine. But then when the person that was doing the experiment put the bunny rabbit in their lap and clapped their hands, yeah. They associated the clapping of the hands with the baby. So that created a fear or an anxiety. So anytime that child will be around a bunny rabbit, then they will be fearful and have anxiety. Oh, because wow. then at that point, it's a perceived, right. mm -hmm. you know, a perceived threat that something bad is going to happen. Mm -hmm. Um it's normal to have some type of anxiety, just about everybody has it, but there are more, uh, there are other times that it is created. We create it in our own environment. Genetically, I think it comes down the pike that some people are just, um, you know, they have it because it came down through the family of origin, uh, their ancestors, their mom and dad may have had anxiety or one person in their family. So it's, it's normal for you to have it that way. Okay. Also, that brings up a predisposition. A, I was going to say a predisposition. So this brings yes. up, without getting mm -hmm. too sidetracked, Kaylee and Jake mm -hmm. have a debate occasionally. Is it nature versus nurture? Because mm -hmm. you know, some of us really probably do have a genetic predisposition to be yeah. anxious. Yeah. But then mm -hmm. I also wonder, how many of us grew up with, mm -hmm. say, parents who were anxious, mm -hmm. therefore we learned mm -hmm. the behavior. So right. It's, yeah. it's kind of interesting. Just like the class. It's actually it. both. Is it? It's actually both. Probably 60, 40, 40, 60. Wow. Because the family of origin that you grew up in has a, a really uh, great influence on life. Um, okay. And sometimes the, gener the genetics comes through stronger than the environmental, but sometimes it's the opposite. 
Right. You know, and therefore, I always used to tell my clients, I still do sometimes, if you're raised by a baboon, you're going to act like a baboon. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so but, but some people learn that, okay, baboons aren't really acceptable in this society, so I need to change that about myself. So some people are willing to make the changes that they need to make and other people, the environment influenced them so much that they don't change and they'll continue to be anxious throughout their lifetime or out throughout their lifespan. I like that comparison. Like, cause some people do notice that a baboon's behavior is not acceptable to normal society. And so right. Except at the zoo. Yeah, except for the zoo. So you have a set of people who decide to make a change. Like, what can I do to better myself? What, how can I improve the situation? So, okay. And I think it's really cool that you can change it. Like, as long as you are mindful and you're, you know, talking to someone or just even in, like, we'll have a conversation. Like, mm -hmm. she has a uh, white coat syndrome. And I never mm -hmm. had white coat syndrome, but we went to the doctor enough together and now I have white coat syndrome. And so I think <laughs> knowing that, like, maybe like now I can let it go because it's something that I know isn't, you know, like I can change it. You can change it. Yeah. 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 So that shows you how easily we can be influenced. Yeah. And sometimes we get in trouble, you know, because we are influenced by other people. And then sometimes we get in trouble because we do our own thinking. Right. So that's not the truth. <laughs> I was um, reading draw the circle this morning. Actually, I was listening to draw the circle by Mark Batterson. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of that book? Mm -hmm. I, I uh -uh. Not. Well, uh, it's, it's a great book. Um, yeah. And he was talking about a psychological experiment. Oh, I forget where they did it. MIT is not right. Cause that's like technological, but anyway, yeah. the thing that they did um, an experiment where they took in so many students and they took a test that was filled and the test was not relevant to the words, but as they were reading their test, it was filled with negative words. Mm. So there was a group of 10 and then another group took the same test, except the words were filled with positive words, mm. respectful words. So then later on in the day, these same students had to go meet with the professor. And each time they set it up with an actor in the room that they weren't unaware of and the professor and the actor were talking and those that were receiving the disrespectful words had a, a higher impatient rate before they interrupted. And so mm -hmm. then the ones mm -hmm. that were patient, the ones that received the respectful words, they waited through the entire two minutes. Wow. So mm -hmm. that shows you how much our environment, what we yeah. receive, affects how we mm -hmm. okay. a Absolutely. Absolutely. So what are the signs or symptoms of anxiety? Well, there's a lot of different signs. Um, restlessness, the trouble concentrating, you know, problems making decisions, worrying about a number of things, which would be generalized anxiety. When you worry about a whole lot of things and not anything specific, um, fatigue, irritability, headaches, um sweating <laughs> <laughs> and hormone imbalances uh -huh. you know a lot of people don't take into consideration your medical condition you know how are you are you eating right are you sleeping right is your body functioning the way that it should be and if it's not then a lot of times anxiety you know will enter in or your body will react and respond to that Sometimes shortness of breath, as in, you know, panic attacks, anxiety attacks, you know, insomnia, irrational fears, chronic indigestion, physical problems. You know, those are a lot of the, the symptoms of anxiety. So it's, it's really interesting, you know, because it's not just, I always picture it like mental and then like the, you know, the big things that you hear about, like the shortness of breath, the sweating, you know, all of that. Mm -hmm. But the anxiety attacks is what I picture. Yeah. But boy, it really, really can affect, like just the small things. Like the symptoms of, yeah, I mean, think about anxious. how many people have like hormone imbalances, congestion, and we just write it off and, you know, take a call. Mm -hmm. And really, it well, and, and a lot of times, yeah, they have no clue what it is. Yeah, right. a lot of times. Yeah, there are times um, you you know the hormone imbalance, which we have mostly women pot, or women listeners. Um, PMS, like I can tell you, mm -hmm. boy, you just know like mm -hmm. everything just seems heightened. When you're just, oh yeah, the yeah, sensitivity. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. That can make you super anxious and yeah, and vice versa. You know, like if I get anxious, and that's when I'm more likely but, to, you know, get sick to my stomach mm -hmm. or you know something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And your hormones control everything in your body. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> not just your mood and your anxiousness, but it affects everything. Yeah, you that's right. A simple reflection is your face, your sleep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, mm -hmm. so how what are some ways that we can recognize when we're feeling anxious, like, and recognize those triggers, like white coat syndrome? Well, yeah. a lot, a lot of times we won't recognize the triggers because neural pathways have been set up in our brain from an early age, and you know, um, temperament-wise, and in a lot of ways, who we are as a person is determined when we're between five and seven years old. Wow. Um, Sorry, kids. I, I'm just like, well, at least I was a little chubby girl, nine to ten. So at least we got in under the, the line. Under the line, yeah. yeah. Under the line there. And then, of course, a lot of things, if you're prone to being anxious, you know, you'll pick up more things to be anxious about as you go through the lifespan. Right. Yeah. So, you know, makes sense. And I mean, it's just crazy that it's five to seven because, you know, that's when you're sending off your kids to like kindergarten and. You know, I can still remember like perfect attendance was a thing. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like I've tried to maintain that, like going through a snowstorm in Nashville, you know, trying to get to an exam. And it was like, the professor was like, why are you here? So I mean, that was something I was anxious about. And I think we, like mm -hmm. you were saying, between five and seven, even if parents are really trying, which most parents are, to raise their children, yeah. right? Not uh -huh. be anxious. Yeah. Um, as another book I was listening to, so even the simple things that parents do, like, oh, you did so well. You know, I'm so proud of you. It mm -hmm. triggers something in your brain that, oh, that's what mama thinks is acceptable. Now I have to do well mm -hmm. on this. Yes, yes. Which gets into another um, part of anxiety. When there are too many expectations placed on us um, as children, usually as children, um, an anxiety disorder called OCD. <laughs> yeah. and come forth yeah. to where they feel like they have to check the door three times they have to check the oven three times or the iron to make sure it's off yeah. or <clears throat> and also one of the things that I noticed in treating OCD is that the obsessions and compulsions always come in threes fives sevens never even numbers it's always odd numbers like they might check their pill bottle their yes. medication bottle three times one two three one two three mm -hmm. yeah or wash their hands three times or seven times or <laughs> oh, and i won't say who this is but i know somebody who would check something and it would be one two three one two three, one, two, three. So yes. it wasn't even one, two, three. It was one, two, three, three times. Now that I think yes. about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And, and I found that to be, I found that to be very interesting that it never ended on an odd number. Yeah. Oh, no, and I don't know why that is. You know, yeah. it's yeah. something neurological huh. in the brain system. Yeah, I guess that double check wasn't enough. So you got to yeah. have the extra. Extra. <laughs> I am an odd yeah. number. Well, I like odd numbers, so maybe it's just weird. It is. Uh, and I'm sure my husband, Jake, listens to the podcast uh, each week, so he has to be laughing so hard because <laughs> I go and check my straightener or curling iron. I don't probably, I'm more than five. But that's the only little quirk. Five. But, okay. But, like he like, you know, like he's just like, before he sets the alarm, like, are you ready for me to set the alarm? And I'm like, hold on. <laughs> run back to yeah. And, so. an, and another thing that happens with OCD is they, um, if they turn around one way, they feel like they have to turn back around the other way to oh. undo it. Oh, oh wow. I, I don't have that person. Mm -hmm. yeah. And stepping over cracks. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Things like that. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I guess. But it's all, all a form of anxiety. Eddie. Gosh. Wow. I know I have a my own. Yeah. Yeah. I, I pick on myself saying I have OCD, which I shouldn't because I know that it is very true that some people have a condition. condition. Yeah. OCD. But I will um, do, I'll recheck stuff. Like, I'm not going to say that I don't, mm -hmm. I, but I don't turn around two or three times. Mm -hmm. I don't worry about the cracks. But right yeah. now, we, um, we got something out of the closet before we got online with you and some stuff toppled over. 
And I'm just like, okay, I'm not even a cam walk away, walk away, because normally I sit there and have to fix it. Yes. Well, what that is, is that's what's called OCPD, oh. an obsessive compulsive personality disorder. Oh. Um, <laughs> or obsessive compulsive personality traits, uh -huh. where you like for things to be in order and to be neat and in their place. Right. So o OCD, the difference is, <clears throat> OCD, you have the checking behaviors. And with OCPD, you don't. You just want things in order. Right. That makes sense. But so you don't have to go back and check it three times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to go back and check it three or five times to make sure it's right. Right. You know. I know it's right. I'll yeah. fix it. <laughs> yeah. So I've got that myself, you know, yeah. OCPD to some degree. Which that can be a good thing. <laughs> I, I found that, especially depending on who you live with or who you hang around with. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. And in Yang situations. Yeah. Uh huh. Yep. So give and take. Yes, it is. It's you know that's how God makes us. Mm -hmm. Um, what are some of your ways of dealing with anxiety? You know, I just mentioned God. For me, I. You know, I write a prayer journal, I pray, I, I try to make it consistently to talk to God mm -hmm. through the day. But um, do you have some recommendations on how to deal with your anxiety? There's a lot of different ways to deal with it. I think the, the main way is, like you say, if you're a Christian, um, then the best way is through your faith. And, you know, what we do know is if, if you read the scripture and you know the scripture is that we win. Mm -hmm. So that takes away the perceived uh, anticipation that something bad is going to happen. Right. So if you know that, you know, that helps just get back into the word and pray and, um, you know, lean on your faith. Mm -hmm. Now um, I'll tell you a little story about, I have dealt with anxiety all my life, pretty much until the last 10 years, probably. Mm -hmm. And, and it's not that I found out the formula, <laughs> but I found out what works for me. Right. Yeah. And it is faith. Mm -hmm. Um, several years back, I was an, um, adjunct graduate professor at, um, Lipscomb university teaching counseling and, uh, supervising the, uh, students coming out into the field. Right. Well, I had already been asked to do, to, to be a professor, but I had to still go through, jump through the hoops and do the interview. Mm -hmm. Well, when I was doing the interview, I was going through a panic attack all of a sudden and they come out of the blue. Yeah. And if you know what they feel like, you can't breathe, you break out into a sweat, um, your heart starts palpitating and you, you feel like you're going to die to some degree. Yeah. And therefore you'll have more panic attacks because they come out of the blue and you're afraid you're going to have them. So they come up from the unconscious. So I told myself, I know how to get out of them now oh. is okay, Terry, you're going through a panic attack. It, this is going to last about 10 minutes. So just don't let him see you sweat. <laughs> <laughs> and I made it through and I started sweating. And one time I pulled my shirt out just to get a little air. You know, <laughs> Put on your smile and say, uh-huh, uh-huh. And I made it through it. And then at the end, I kind of laughed. I said, you did it, girl. And that's what you have to do. That's how you get through some of these things. Mindfulness. Training your mind to understand that I'm not going to die from this. Right. You know, what's, what's the worst thing that could happen? Right. Um, thought stopping. You know, you can tell yourself, stop that. You know that there's always options in life. That's one of my best phrases for my, my clients when they have anxiety is you have to tell yourself there are always options. Mm -hmm. And what if I do mess up? What's the worst thing that can happen? Right. Mm -hmm. And when you really think through that, you know, it's not like you're going to be in prison for the rest of your life for messing up an interview, you know? Right. <laughs> so um, thought stopping relaxation techniques is another you know, teaching yourself how to breathe and, and get through it and talk yourself through it. Reframing, changing what your mind is thinking about. Um, is this rational or is this irrational? Mm -hmm. Is it logical or is it illogical? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and read scripture like we said. And another thing that I tell people a lot is do something with your hands. 
because if you do something with your hands, your brain does not have time to talk to you about how anxious you are. So if you're playing golf, it has to concentrate on you hitting the ball. Yeah. Right. So, and anything that you wanted to do with your hands, you know, drawing or doing pottery, something that takes your mind away from, from what it's doing. Yeah. yeah, I've noticed even just exercise for me, which involves my hands, whether it be mm-hmm. yoga, yep. or weightlifting, it, I can't mm-hmm. think about anything, but am I holding this pose right? And I'm doing very well to remember to breathe. Yeah. So right. let alone mm-hmm. remember a worry when I'm mm-hmm. exercising. That, that helps yeah. me too. What about you? Absolutely. I think exercise and then um, having like a bedtime routine helps yeah. because like I'm staying busy. I always get a bed. Mm-hmm. Um, the exercise makes me sleepy, you know, and so I yeah. feel like that helps me wind down because I know for me, you know, like I'll start feeling anxious and worrying, you know, like at night because that's, mm-hmm. what, you know, mama always says, which I guess it's even, it's a nanny quote, my yeah. grandmother. Well, I, like, bet, I bet Terry knows this too. Yeah. So go ahead. Uh-huh. Uh, but just like everything looks better in the morning. Like just go to sleep. Everything looks better in the morning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, for sure. And, and you're fresh in the morning when you wake up and you're tired in the afternoons. Yeah. Yeah. One thing that exercise does for you also, it is increase, it increases the endorphin production, mm-hmm. you know, and when you're eating right, it increases the serotonin production. Yeah. So you get all of those things, your dopamine, your serotonin and your endorphins going right, you know, and you're keeping your body in good shape. You're going to be in a better position to, you know, counterbalance the anxiety. Right. Yeah. I had forgotten. I, I like Terry and I have known each other since I was born. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I had forgotten that I didn't realize that you were golf. I knew you were tennis. So that helps. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I'm not golf. You're not golf. Okay. okay. Uh-uh. You're tennis. Though. I'm not. I probably should be. Yeah, I, I play tennis. Yeah. I just I brought that up as a sidetrack because because Kaylee and I have thought about taking up golf. So when you mentioned, mm-hmm. like, yeah, I don't remember her golf. Yeah. Well, when you do, let me know. We'll all go take lessons together. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So sounds like fun. Yeah. I like the idea of being able to focus on golf because yeah. sometimes when I'm doing yoga or, you know, a more hard workout, like cardio or something, it's, you know, I'm taking everything, but like, I like the idea of being able to like focus on like one place I want to go or where I want the ball to go. So I think it'd be fun. Uh-huh. I'm mm-hmm. uh, a little side note about me. Uh, I really like to target shoot, I guess. Uh-huh. Having grown up in that family, I, I like to do that, but it requires your brain to be specifically in one place. And yes. I yes. considered it as meditation. So I can, mm-hmm. you know, so anyway. Yeah. Meditation, mindfulness. That's great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I guess our last question that we wanted to ask is just when is it like, when do you know it's time to talk to professional? Like maybe it's not just a little bit of normal anxiety or fear, but it's like, okay, this is serious. Like how do you know when it's time you should see a professional? Yeah. Usually it's, it's getting to a place to where um, it's affecting your whole life and you can't function normally in society. You're having trouble eating, sleeping, working, relationships are an issue. You know, when that happens, it's time to go check with your doctor Mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, tell them what's going on. And many times I do get referrals from doctors Mm -hmm. that they let them know that this is something that you need to work on with your mind. I, I personally do not feel like just taking medication for it is the best approach. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to train our mind and our bodies first. Mm -hmm. And there are some people that do have clinical issues and they have to um, take medication for it. Mm -hmm. But the first um, route I believe I would take is seeing if there's some things that I can change about the habits and eating habits, sleeping, um, alcohol, of course, you know, try to stay away from uh, overindulging there Mm -hmm. and see if you can do it by just better health and mental health uh, things instead of, go into a medication first right right that totally makes sense and I mean I know for us like we both feel better when we're eating healthy and when we know we have that group of girlfriends that we can talk to you know like if something's stressing us out or if we feel 
like, oh, I messed up here, and just being able to talk it out helps. And then having our faith, mm -hmm. playing, I guess, the cornerstone really helps. Right. I, I, yes. I agree. I was going to say, uh, just having that group of people to talk to mm -hmm. has, you know, and it's group. My group is really small. So I want to say that for all of our listeners. Yeah. It, for some girls, they have a massive group, and for others, introverted like yeah. me, it's okay to have just two or three that, yeah, yeah. that you really mm -hmm. talk to and mm -hmm. you know, am I, and I know this am I crazy to think this and it helps to have that girlfriend go no girl you ain't crazy <laughs> <laughs> yeah and sometimes it really is better to keep your circle small yeah yeah, yeah. because yeah. not all of your friends are going to want to deal with it because they're dealing with some of their own stuff mm -hmm. and a lot of people just won't understand it if they haven't experienced it Right. Yeah. And that can make you feel more anxious than alone, mm -hmm. I would think, because they're not understanding mm -hmm. what you're going through. So, yeah. For I'm sure. Two, two people. Two people. That, that's it. Yeah. Well, I have three. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I should say three. Yeah. yeah. I have three. Yeah. Yeah. That's much better. Of, of course she does. It's not an even number. She has three. <laughs> no. Five. She has three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do. I have three. <laughs> well, this has been so awesome. Thank you for you know, getting on here and mm -hmm. talking to us, you know, yeah. we hope it helped our listeners that were, you know, asking questions about anxiety. Mm -hmm. um, if you, you know, want to check out more about Terry, she mm -hmm. has a website, terryallenatwoodcounseling.com. We will put it in the show notes. And if you mm -hmm. want to check out the women's ministry, mm -hmm. um, it is bold, brave, and beautiful.org. So we'll make sure that we put that in the show notes in case anybody missed it and listening. Yeah, definitely check them out on Facebook too. Um, I'm sure if you go to their site, you can find it. But like, I love seeing their stuff pop up. And man, can they sing. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I didn't know you could sing so well. <laughs> so, well, thank you again. And if you have um, any ideas for a future episode, you can always email us at team at kimandkaylee.com. And if you liked this episode, make sure that you leave us a review because that'll just tickle us. Yeah. We'll be so happy. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Bye. Bye.